A promising law student invited friends over for a dinner party. Little did they know, murder was on the menu. Today, we're going to look at an intimate partner homicide case, which is uncommon in the sense that the perpetrator is the woman. It is estimated that intimate partner homicide accounts for just 4% of murders of men, in contrast to about one-third of murders of women. In almost half the cases where women murder their partner, it is as a response to a violent attack from their partner. However, this was not the case for Joe Chinque, who was murdered by his partner Anu Singh for reasons that, to this day, are still not entirely clear. Joe Chinque and Anu Singh met in Newcastle, New South Wales in 1995. Joe was a handsome young engineer and was immediately taken by 22-year-old Singh. Little did Joe know the trajectory of his life had just altered massively. Singh was already in a relationship when she met Joe and they began an affair. It was around this time that Singh's mental health problems escalated. As a result of her affair with Joe, Singh and her boyfriend Simon Walsh broke up. Singh did not appear to take it well. She began to use recreational drugs daily, developed insomnia and would pace the house at night. Singh moved to Canberra to study a double degree in economics and law at the Australian National University and her and Joe went long distance. Joe travelled from Newcastle every weekend to be with Singh and was, by all reports, smitten. Joe's visits increased in frequency, seemingly motivated by concern for Singh's well-being. Joe's parents, Maria and Nino, were concerned that Singh was too unstable. At one point, Maria warned her son not to let Singh control him with her constant demands. Joe begged his mother not to make him choose between them. Eventually, Joe moved to Canberra and the young couple began living together. According to friends, they appeared happy at times, but Singh's mental state continued to deteriorate. Her attendance at university became sporadic, and on the rare occasion she was seen by her peers, she appeared dishevelled and poorly dressed, in contrast to her former prideful dress sense. Singh had body image and mental health issues. According to a friend of Singh, she was highly obsessed with her physical image and had developed bulimia. She would spend hours working out at the gym and experimenting with various purging techniques. She was also obsessed with fad diets, telling her friends that she would rather be dead than fat. At one point, Singh took Ipecac, a drug which is most commonly used to cause vomiting in cases of accidental poisoning. Singh believed the Ipecac had caused her physical ailments and blamed Joe for this as he was the one who had mentioned the drug in a passing conversation. Singh became angry towards Joe for this. Singh suffered with severe stomach issues, the cause of which was unknown. She experimented with amphetamines and, possibly as a result of this, would often spiral into paranoia, believing things were crawling under her skin. Singh experienced disassociative symptoms, once telling her mother that she felt like her head was sitting on someone else's body. Another time, Singh reportedly became convinced she had contracted HIV and told one of her friends that it was unfair that Joe was unaffected by her disease. Singh told her friend that she planned to put a drop of her infected blood on Joe's toothbrush. In May 1997, Singh told another friend that she wanted to go on a rampage and kill several people, including Joe, her ex-boyfriend and her doctors who had failed to diagnose her. Singh told her friend that she had studied psychiatric texts and it wouldn't be too hard to convince someone that you're insane. Well, that year, Singh acted on her desires. The question is, was she of sound mind or not? Let me know what you think in the comments so far. In September and October 1997, Singh spoke to several people about wanting to kill herself. She had initially chosen to shoot herself, but following a conversation about heroin overdose with a drug user on campus, Singh changed her mind. She purchased half a gram of heroin and was shown how to shoot up. Singh then returned to buy another gram. The drug dealer asked why she needed so much, to which she replied, someone's coming with me. On the 24th of October 1997, Singh invited some friends round for a dinner party at her and Joe's place. This was the second one she had thrown in a week. The first was reportedly a goodbye party for Singh, 
as there were rumours she was going to kill herself afterwards, which she did not. Strangely, no one intervened or tried to help Singh, despite these rumours. When the party passed without incident, people assumed it had been a bid for attention. This second dinner party went along the same lines, with several of the guests being aware that Singh was planning some sort of suicide pact. Remarkably, again, no one tried to help. Multiple guests later testified that they did not think Singh was serious. Before the second dinner party, Singh told her friends that a crime was going to be committed. None of her friends took the threat seriously, but Singh was not messing around. Before the night was out, Joe was unconscious. After the guests had left, Singh laced his cup of coffee with crushed up rohypnol, a known date rape drug which leads to incapacitation and amnesia, before injecting him with a large dose of heroin. Singh waited 36 hours before calling paramedics and then delayed them further by refusing to give them the correct address. In the day and a half between the dinner party and Singh calling the paramedics, she had made several phone calls to friends about what she was doing. Singh told them that Joe was vomiting blood, only taking one breath every 10 seconds, and that his lips had turned blue. By the time the paramedics arrived, it was too late for Joe. He had suffered a cardiac arrest and could not be revived. When police arrived at the scene, Singh was hysterical and struggled with officers when they took her away from Joe's body. According to witnesses, Singh's close friend, Madhavi Rao, was aware of what Singh was trying to do at the dinner parties, having told one of the guests that Singh had tried to kill Joe at the first dinner party, but had not delivered a sufficient dose. The day after the first dinner party, Singh and Rao went to another friend, Len Mancini, and told him they had given Joe drugs the previous evening. Anu Singh was charged with murder and first stood trial on the 28th of October 1997. Singh claimed to have drugged Joe so that he would not interfere with her suicide attempt. Singh applied for bail in December, at which point a psychiatrist presented evidence that Singh was suffering with a personality disorder. The prosecution deemed Singh as someone who embodied strong narcissistic traits. Rao was charged with conspiracy to commit murder and was released on bail. Singh and Rao were then tried jointly in October and November 1998, but the trial was aborted on the 11th of November as the judge deemed one of the pieces of evidence problematic as it was unclear as to whether it was admissible against Singh or Rao. In Rao's second trial, she was charged with murder, manslaughter, attempted murder and administering a stupefying drug. However, she was acquitted of all charges. What do you think of this? Let me know in the comments below. For Singh's second trial in 1999, she elected to stand trial by judge alone, foregoing a jury. Singh's defence presented evidence of Singh's mental illness and claimed she therefore had diminished responsibility, proposing an insanity defence. The court was told of Singh's paranoid delusions and her bulimia. However, an expert witness testified that on the night she was arrested, Singh appeared rational and assertive. Singh was eventually convicted of the lesser charge of manslaughter due to diminished responsibility and served just four years of her 10-year sentence, using her time to complete a master's in criminology. Singh was released on parole in October 2001 and has since written a thesis on female offenders and the reasons behind their crimes. Singh has given interviews since her release, recounting her own memories of the murder. Singh remains adamant that she was suffering from a severe mental illness at the time, and had she sought the right type of help, the tragic incident would not have happened. The forensic psychiatrist who assessed Singh for the trial supported her claims of a mental illness, describing her as a grossly disordered woman. He did say that Singh knew what she was doing up to a point, but she was not in a normal state of mind. On the other hand, the detective sergeant who worked on the case remained sceptical of Singh's diminished responsibility charge, saying she had fooled the courts and that she wants to see herself as the victim. Joe's parents also do not believe that Singh did not know what she was doing. Joe's mother called Singh the devil and said she will never forgive her. 
The motivation behind Joe's murder remains unclear. If Singh was truly experiencing a mental health episode at the time, it's still unclear why she thought she needed to kill Joe. There was also an element of premeditation. The organization of dinner parties and purchase of drugs made it seem very well planned, as opposed to an impulsive or chaotic murder that may be expected of someone who is not of sound mind. If Singh was not experiencing a mental health episode, the reasons remain even more unclear. Joe appeared to be nothing but a loving boyfriend and did not appear to have hurt Singh in any way. In fact, he seemed to really care about her, demonstrated by his willingness to move to Canberra to be with her while she was experiencing difficulties. Let me know what you think in the comments below regarding Singh's defense. Was she truly troubled or just a manipulative narcissist?